Today I'm taking a look at the Tunkia handheld digital Tesla meter. That's cool. So there's actually some magnets in the box too, so we can use that to test it. So we got our user manual. We got our probe. So this is using, looks like a five pin connector. And there is the probe. Here is the tool itself. It looks like we've got a screw and battery cover, but we got a little screwdriver here so we can actually change the batteries. And it looks like this uses a nine volt battery. With this connector, you just find that slot there on the top, and then we line that up with the notch on the socket. So in the instructions, it gives you the range that this is capable of. So this is 200 milliteslas up to 2,000 milliteslas. So that is equivalent to two teslas. So to put that in perspective, one tesla is capable of lifting a car. So this can read up to two teslas. So that's very impressive. And of course, one gauss is one ten thousandth of a tesla. So that means that 20,000 teslas is 2,000 milliteslas. So just add a zero if you want to convert that to gauss. So 200 to 2,000 milliteslas. And there's also three different classes. See on here, this is a class five. So that's going to be accurate up to 2% at 20 milliteslas or 5% at 1,000 milliteslas. Okay, nice big numbers, easy to read, so that's important. The reason it could be reading that is because I actually have some magnets nearby, which means that this is a very sensitive tool. Let's see what happens when I pull this off. Oh, that's interesting. It actually gets more accurate. Huh, how about that? I wonder if there's something going on. So I don't know. But at any rate, if this did not read zero, we just hit null. That's essentially the same as going to clear or zeroing it. Looks like we got a backlight. That's nice. And here we can decide if we want to do milliteslas or gauss. So there's gauss, there's milliteslas. We also have a hold function. So if we bring this closer to a magnet, we can see that the highest value I got was 83.05. So that way if you have a varying reading on here, we can get the absolute maximum that this was able to read. So now I want to see what these magnets actually read. So here I've got what I consider to be sort of a, like a light to medium duty magnet. So it's strong enough to hold up like a hose reel or something like that. And we can also see that we've got six magnets strung around it. So if I put the probe over it, that is actually updating extremely quickly. I'm impressed by that. So I want to put it right next to it. I am getting about 300 milliteslas. The fact that that's so close to 300 means that they probably put a specific magnet in here and this can read that fairly accurately. So if we bring that up, oh, nice. And it's actually telling us the pulse. So this magnet is north, which means the one next to it should be south. Yep. And the one next to that is also north and they are all reading 300 milliteslas. So now I know exactly what these magnets are. So here is a larger magnet. This is more of a heavy duty one. You can see that I actually pulled some of the rubber off of there just to see the magnet on the inside. I'm curious if this rubber can actually make a difference. So let's read this one. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm getting about 300 for that one as well. I thought this one, maybe just because there's way more magnets. And there is a slight increase if you take off the rubber. That's interesting. Not by a lot, but there is a difference. How about that? So it is very neat that I have a tool now that I can actually measure the magnets I've been playing around with instead of just guessing or going by what the manufacturer says and all the numbers that I can go by instead of just hoping. So yeah, overall, that is a very cool tool.